Hello again everybody. I wanted to make a video on wiring, or at least how I've done my wiring. Go over some of the details. I know when I was building this system, I relied 100% on the uh, DIYers out there. The guys making the videos, putting in the time, putting in the work so that guys like myself can actually go see what others have done, learned and hopefully do it right the first time. I know myself I made a lot of mistakes. I really didn't know a whole lot about electricity to be honest. I was going to hire some engineers, basically read, watch a bunch of videos, read some more, hire an engineer at the end to uh, let me know how everything went um, over the course of reading, learning, and following a few schematics. Felt comfortable enough that uh, I could implement it myself and as time progressed I felt uh, pretty confident in the system that I was implementing. Of course I made some mistakes along the way. We all do as we learn, right? Uh, I want to say thanks to all the other uh, DIYers out there taking the time to put the videos together. Uh, that's why I'm doing it. That's my inspiration. I relied uh, probably 80%, maybe 70% on a lot of the videos some of these other guys have made on putting these systems together. I know it's not easy and uh, it's extremely expensive when you're hiring some of these professionals system I put in place including the batteries was probably only ten thousand dollars I know my buddy in uh, Florida he put in a system that was actually less kilowatts and he paid thirty thousand dollars and he just did that so real important here I need to go over a uh, risk factor I'm not a certified electrician I am not an electrical engineer um, I've said in some other videos I am a um, computer I'm a network engineer that's a lot different from electricity engineering so this is for entertainment purposes. I know a lot of you guys are learning from it. I'm also learning from it. I am going to expose my system, what I've done right, what I've done wrong. Hopefully, uh, some of these professionals can come on here, give us their opinion, and uh, I can better my system and hopefully better the systems uh, that you guys have put in place and we can be a little more confident in exactly what we're doing, how we're doing it, and why we're doing it. So, with that note, let's get started. Service panels. This is my main service panel that comes from the grid, services all the electrical uh, outlets in the house. I didn't do this wiring, I bought the house like that. The guy that uh, lived here loved electricity, he literally has uh, probably, and this is no joke, 10 to 12 outlets in each room. He's got lights running everywhere, uh, lights inside, outside, uh, four-way switches. <laughs> it's pretty amazing uh, the electrical job he did. But when it comes down to the wiring, we have a uh, what I call an Italian spaghetti mess. The guy's uh, Italian. He's a good guy, but uh, yeah, that needs to be cleaned up. That's the main breaker box. Servicing the house comes from the grid. This is the service panel that I put in. A sub panel that services the inverters come over, services the new components that I am installing in the house, and that's what we will go over. So if we get a little uh, deeper into this, <clears throat> obviously you have your DC lines coming in. Mine come in down a service line here that I have in conduit for safety reasons. In case you bump into it, run into it, you know, you fall into it, water gets spilt, whatever it be. I also have a backup uh, little case that I cover everything with. So those wires come down. They come from the panels directly from that combiner box. They come down in here, come into your first box that uh, basically services as a breaker box. These are DC breakers. Big difference between DC and AC breakers, so don't screw that one up. DC breakers, they are 40 amp breakers, each of them, and 400 volts. So you have, I have one set of array of panels, which is 12 panels on one breaker. That's one array. And then I have my second array that's on 12 panels, has its own circuit breaker. So you've got your negative, and your positive coming in here. They're gonna come out and they're gonna service directly to one of your inverters. In this case, I have my negative and I have my positive. It is a good idea to put some knocks on any of these wires and crimp them. You will get a lot more uh, secure connection. You won't have wire fraying, looks nice. You won't have any strands hanging out loose. And overall, uh, I really highly suggest that you uh, take the time, buy some knocks and get a little crimper they're not expensive so from there we have an AC in the AC in is this one here this comes from your main circuit your main breaker box that is the grid you have a negative you have a positive and you have a ground we follow that down I believe that is an 8 gauge wire that comes in directly to my main breaker panel that services grid 
comes to 40 amp double pole breaker. Now one of the things I did <clears throat> incorrectly was I had a single pole breaker, 40 amp, going down to its own box that I was connecting both my inverters to. Now it worked perfect when I connected one inverter, the AC in, but when I connected both, my inverters gave me a 1516 error. Why is that? Well, I learned that you're going to have to use an individual pull and breaker on each of those inverters. So, for you guys that don't know, you have the AC in coming from your inverter. Yeah, I have a positive here, I have a negative, and I have a ground. Well, those negative and grounds go over here to the bus bar. You have a negative and I have a ground connecting that bus bar that's grounded to the back side of that panel with the uh, bonding screw and then I have the power from one inverter going into one pole the power of the other inverter coming into the other pole and that services a double pole breaker what is that? well you have one pole that's 120 volts and you have another pole on this side that's 120 volts and if you've ever looked at the back side of these uh, breaker box panels you'll see that every other one is switched so you have one side functioning off one part of this breaker and the other side functioning off the other side of this breaker that's why they call it a double pole breaker now that I connected that I have both wires coming into your AC in I have no more errors that was lesson number one learn whoever told me that one thank you really appreciate it on the back side of these uh, AC ins you have the AC outs well the AC out can barely see that one let's go over to this one and we can see it a little better and you can you have a the two red knocks there and a white cable I don't have any more green cable so the white cable will represent the ground you have a black which will be your positive and you have a white which will be your negative that is the AC out where does that go that goes to your breaker panel in this case it'll be my sub panel that I installed additionally that's going to service all of my solar uh, electricity eventually I will convert everything over from this box to this box with the capabilities of continuing the connection on grid which is the nice thing with these particular inverters they are hybrid so you can connect them to the grid and use the power as need I don't generate quite enough power in order to run my house currently because I am using 240 volt heaters which consumes a lot of electricity for those guys that don't know if I wasn't using any 240s I probably am generating enough power off of a 7 kilowatt system to generate enough electricity to not have to uh, use any grid power so that's kind of nice a um, little rundown here so you have the AC coming out of each inverter you have an AC out coming out here you have an AC out coming out here they run down the conduit down through here on the back side here comes down comes through comes out comes into its new sub panel you have a power from one coming in goes into its own circuit breaker and you have a two coming in so each one of these is connected to each inverter this is again is a double pole breaker I've got 120 volts here I've got 120 volts here and here you can actually see how you have double pole so I have 120 volts here I have 120 volts here double pole this particular breaker services one side and services the other side so even though it looks like it's one it's actually two servicing both sides which will give me 240 volts now I told you I'm using an electric heater. This is an electric heater. It's a double pole. It's working off both sides. So you got 120, 120 to make 240. It's going up off this uh, big cable here. I believe it's a eight gauge cable as well, running and going to that uh, heater. The neutral coming off of each uh, inverter comes up, comes into the neutral bar, connects here individually. And then I have the ground running to the back side of my sub panel. And I also have a bonding screw right there that's screwed in so it's actually taking this neutral bar, bonding it to the back side of the actual breaker box that grounds it out to my ground pole. I did test that to see if there's any current on there. There's not, but uh, I am sure that uh, there will be a lot of opinions on that one and I am looking forward to it because like I said, I am not an electric engineer so it'll be nice to get some professional opinions in here, find out what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, any suggestions, clean everything up, be a little safer, a little more secure, and um, yeah, all around more robust system, right? I did wire uh, one of these uh, little multimeters, uh, amp, amp meters, uh, just to 
give me a little backup of what's going on. Pretty simple little device here. I think they're, I don't even know, 50 bucks, maybe even cheaper, $30. Um, basically you have a uh, uh, C-clamp that goes around your power cables. One of the little power cables connects into a little 15 amp breaker that I have there. The other one's a neutral, goes to the neutral bus bar and wham, that thing is on and, and reading. Pretty cool little device. Um, on my circuit uh, breaker here, I ran one additional box and that is plugged into a bunch of grow lights that I have. No, I'm not growing marijuana, I'm growing actual plants. And I'm actually doing microgreens. Uh, currently they're in gestation and seeding and uh, basically just have a bunch of uh, house plants here for the wife. Uh, we're gonna be increasing this size to probably about a thousand percent more. I'm gonna clean all this out, put in a bunch of tables and literally have a grow house down here during the winter months and grow vegetables, plants, everything else. Since we're on the subject, this is my 240 volt heater. It is wired directly to the solar system. We'll turn it on here so you guys can see. It has a uh, 3000 watt option, 4000 watt, 5000 watt. We'll switch it on to, uh, well, we'll turn it on right now. The 3000, you guys can see. See if there's any flicker in the lights here behind me. And there's barely a flicker. You probably couldn't even see it on the camera. You can go to 4000 watts, same thing. Really nice heater, turn it up, turn it on. This thing uh, gets really hot, but man, does this thing consume the uh, electricity. I'm gonna turn it down here, I don't need it that high. Turn that back, because we don't need it. And now my inverters are making all kinds of noise. <clears throat> As you guys know, they have the grow watts. These things, uh, when they ramp up, they make all kinds of noise. But I can deal with that. So on to the rest of it. So as you can see here, I have my main ground wire connected to the additional bus bar that is connected to the back side of my breaker box. I screwed that in. The main wire here on the bottom, eight gauge wire, goes out, runs directly to that grounding rod that is 10 foot into the ground. I can't remember the dimension. I think they call for half inch minimum grounding rod or five eighths. Uh, you'll have to double check that one. That runs directly out to that grounding rod, comes through, comes out, goes up, and goes out to that grounding rod. I have additional ground that comes in here. As you can see, you're probably wondering why I have double wire here while the white is simulating the ground. I have that feeding into a bus bar ground here that connects to the chassis of my batteries and then of course we have the batteries and since we're on the ground I have the chassis of my batteries connected down here in the corner I don't know if you can see it that connects to the chassis that connects to that service panel that sub panel that goes out to my grounding rod and then of course from the chassis which of course you probably wouldn't need because it's already connected to the batteries there I put an additional one just to make sure so I go from the chassis directly to the battery terminal up to the other battery terminal and so on in sequence to make sure that we get everything grounded my battery cable wiring pretty simple setup these particular batteries I believe I have this in another video they are wired in series that means that the 24, each one of them is a 24 volt battery. You wire them in series, connecting one to the other, which I've done here. Goes up, connects to the negative there, to the positive there. That is a series connection. That increases my volts, turns them double. It will keep the amps the same. So I have two 24 volt batteries wired in series, making 48 volts, 200 amps, or 200 amp batteries. The amps stay the same, unfortunately have another two sets of batteries down here, the same thing, they're wired in series. Again, you have the 48 volts. So I have 48 volts coming to this bus bar and 400 amps. Pretty simple setup here with the bus bar. Uh, for those that are making your bus bars, you don't buy a nice case, make sure you're getting the correct gauge of copper, the best transmitter that you're going to be pushing amps on. Uh, definitely go overkill because you don't want anything melting. Uh, imagine if a wire came disconnected from there with all the uh, volts and amps that you're going to have coming through it. From there, I have a four gauge wire connected at the top that goes directly through on this side. 
I have the same. I don't have the uh, little plastic protector off this one. I took the other one off for display reasons. So you have the positive off the one set of batteries here coming and connecting. The other positive coming off that set of batteries connecting here. And then I have my positive connecting here that's going to the Victron shunt, which is that little power cable you see there. So you have the big cable, which is a number four gauge cable, AWG, running through. I put mine in copper, or uh, copper, I put mine in uh, PVC plumbing. That's just an extra protectant in case a wire was to get hot or fray or anything like that. Well, we won't be touching any of the metal. It's probably not needed, but uh, I want to be as protectant as I possibly can. So coming from the bus bars here, you have a positive and a negative coming up. Remember it's DC power. Mine goes directly to a Victron battery shunt. The negative comes in, goes through the shunt, comes out. The positive comes up on its own, it's not connected to anything. And then you have a direct shutoff. So those are just DC direct shutoffs for my batteries. Quick shutoffs, nice. I think they go up to 500 amps if I'm not mistaken, maybe even a thousand, I can't remember. You have to verify that. Uh, all it is is a, is a direct shutoff. Now I do want to implement additional fuses in this wiring. I will probably put in uh, 200 amp fuses. Uh, those nice little push button ones, I believe they're marine fuses. That will give me the added security that in between this wiring, this setup, I do definitely have some fuses. Uh, supposedly these batteries have fuses built into them. I don't want to rely on only that. I want to see something visually and be able to use it. You can't have enough uh, fuses in your circuit as far as I'm concerned. If you have an issue, you definitely want something triggering instead of uh, that electricity going somewhere it shouldn't. And in worst case scenario, it doesn't go anywhere and it goes into you when you grab something. So from the DC direct shutoffs, you're gonna be going, obviously uh, one negative goes to one inverter, one positive goes to one inverter and vice versa. So you come up, back side of these Inverters, you will see in the back there, you have a negative and you will have a positive. Triple check your work. Make sure you're not crossing the positive where the negative needs to be. You will have an issue. Fortunately, this particular grow lot has a safety device built into it where it will automatically shut off. But folks, you can never be certain enough when dealing with electricity. I'm telling you, no complacency. I don't know if I made a video on this, but... Uh... Those are fixed uh, panels, fixed uh, stand for those panels. Built them out of treated lumber. Obviously it'd be really nice if they were adjustable, but uh, on that first build, I'm planning on putting up three times as many panels. I wanted to get some panels up. And uh, that was a nice solid structure for this area. It's something that'll support snowfall, wind, everything like that. They do get tornadoes in these areas once in a while. I tell you, for those that are in the living in the winter, one thing you're gonna wanna do is, you can see as I bring my snow blower down here and you get the snow cleared out in front of the panels because when you're cleaning these off and the snow starts to accumulate, you have nowhere for it to go. Let's go back here and see what we got going on. There's the general setup, how I've done it here. I put that backer board on there basically to protect it from the elements, rain, anything like that animals coming through i am going to come back and put up some kind of bracing on that conduit coming up all my wires are buried i buried them three feet under the ground um that's a lot of fun for those that uh, that are going to be burying wires okay so one of the other overviews here <clears throat> you can see how i did my wiring since we're on wiring i put these little things here just as a little blocker from the sun and the elements. I um, guess I need to put something a little better for that as they're moving around. I don't want any of the solar cables basically being exposed to the sun, the rain, the snow, anything like that. You know, more protection the better as far as I'm concerned. I'm gonna come back through and connect all these. So I labeled everything here. <clears throat> I'm trying to hit it up in the high as I could get outside the elements. Use your zip ties. One thing I did do is uh, I put up a copper wire in here that's connected to all of my my super struts. Now a lot of guys say that 
you should wire each individual panel with the copper wire directly to it and I fully agree. Uh, I have a grounding rod somewhere over here. Um, I don't know where it is, I'm not going to dig it up, it's too far into the snow, it looks like about 15 inches of snow. Comes down, connects to a bus bar that I sit up here, outside. Yeah, got the main ground coming in here, I've got my negatives coming in here. That goes up and these come down and feed into my combiner box. This is obviously DC coming from the combiner box. Goes down into a little junction box. That junction box basically serves as main cables coming in and then the second set of cables servicing my other array over here. Everything is on the ground. So each of the panels then goes down to its own combiner box. So I have 12 panels servicing one combiner box. The other set of setup of array has its own combiner box. I have 12 panels here, basically three legs. So I have four panels wired in parallel. Yeah, remember parallel is going to increase the amps and not the volts. So I'm running 315 times four, roughly 1200, right? And uh, the volts stay the same at 48. So I've got a leg of 48, I've got a leg of 48, and I got a leg of 48. So you should ideally be running around 150 volts, right? At the bus bar. Of course, the amps are gonna increase because you have three different legs, and that's on one. So each uh, array comes in. So I've got basically my array, I got my leg number one. I've got it wired here, leg number one. So I got leg number one. I've got it wired here, leg number one. That's positive, this is negative coming in. Remember, this is all DC, so this is leg number two coming in. So off of one leg, which I have down here, that's my number one, you run in parallel, connect the number in parallel, you run in the positive coming up here, it's coming down and going into number one here. I label them all just for, I don't wanna have confusion, anything like that. They are labeled from the, the factory in the back side, but for my own convenience and complacency, I want more numbers, numbers for surety. So you uh, <clears throat> you wire them up. You're running one of the positives and one of the negatives in the combiner box. You're running number two, number two, obviously, number three, and number three. I do have a slot for a uh, fourth, and I am planning on putting on four more panels on each array. So that I have uh, full on 16 panels on each array. That'll bring up my volts, obviously bring up more amps. But I want to get my volts up and running around 150, 160 continually. Those inverters that I have uh, don't even turn on unless they're 120 volts. I haven't had any of those issues, but for more potency and uh, I have the space, I'm going to bump up these, uh, these arrays to 16 panels each. Yeah, this, uh, this combiner box I bought from uh, Ian. Really nice combiner box, you know, fully wired. Yeah, they might be a little more expensive than normal, but if you start pricing it out and doing it all yourself, you might save a little bit of money. Um, definitely gonna take some time. So, thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned something. Um, I did, and I'm sure I will learn more in the comments. Looking forward to that. Please uh, leave your comments. Let's use this video and let's use those posts and comments to uh, help myself help others to be safe, uh, better your systems, make them solid, and enjoy the process while we're doing so. So, happy DIYing guys, and we'll see you in another video.